Hi, how's it going? This is pretty much going to be a presentation of theory and results, not so much coding. I'm happy with how this was implemented, not so happy with the performance. I'll talk about that in a bit. So let's say we have some sort of acceleration structure, so some sort of, you know, binary tree. And one of these objects moves. Now, let's say we don't want to rebuild the whole binary tree because that would take some amount of time, but this object here moves. We will need to update the bounds of this node based on the sphere. And then this parent node needs to contain both of these nodes. And so this parent node is going to need to get updated. And then this parent node contains this node, which has changed. So it will need to be updated, need to be refit. So it's sort of a an upwards propagating operation. But what this is not doing is it's not fundamentally changing the topology of the tree. The structure that we have here will stay intact. It's just that the bounds of the individual boxes will change. Now this may look recursive. However, if we look at the way the algorithm works, say this is node zero, we spawn node one and two. Remember that the left and right children are always separated by a difference of one. We go to node one, we spawn nodes three and four. Going to node three, we have five and six. You can see how this is going, seven and eight, nine and 10. The one invariant here is that the node index will always be greater than its parent. We don't know exactly what that relationship is, but we know it's always greater. So if we have a tree and everything is dynamic, everything is changing, then all we need to do to refit this is step backwards from the end to the beginning. And this will guarantee that we do not need to do all of these little recursive calls for every child. It'll guarantee that the whole tree will be refit. So that's the basic theory, but there's a little more to it. So like I said, this refit will not change the fundamental topology of the situation. So it may turn out some things update and it may turn out that now the optimal tree looks, I don't know, something like that. Imagine a tree which is different, but has the same nodes like reordered. Now, obviously this is a more expensive operation, but at the same time, we cannot keep indefinitely refitting the same tree. It will degrade. So there's sort of a balancing act between rebuilding and refitting. We also need to bear in mind that maybe not everything is dynamic. Maybe not everything needs to be refit. And so it might be a good idea to split out the static geometry from the dynamic geometry and only rebuild the dynamic stuff. Enough of that, let's have a look at the code. Okay, so we are now in the code. And like I said, I'm happy with this implementation. I'm not happy with the performance. And I feel like that limit that I'm at is just because it's in Python. What we've got is we've got the app, let's say. And remember, the app has frame time, which is the, num uh, the time in milliseconds since the last update. So this app is gonna send a message every frame to the scene to tell the scene to update. And by the way, I've changed the, the structs that I'm using under the hood. So if I go to config, I've actually made a video on this in the past, but you can actually create what's called um, structured arrays or um, data types. You can create your own custom records and that's what I'm doing here. So for my sphere, I'm gonna keep the center and the radius as well as I've now got velocity because I want all my spheres to move. And instead of remembering all the RGB info and all of that, I'm actually just gonna have an unsigned integer that points to a material, which we can see here. And this also speeds things up because if we look at the BVH node, for instance, things like the sphere count and contents should be integers. I was storing them at the time as floats and then converting them on the fly in the GPU. That's a horrible idea, very wasteful. So instead, I'm taking advantage of structured data types to have heterogeneous data. So back to the business. Our scene is going to update. Now, what will that do? Well, all our spheres have velocity, so it's going to attempt to move all of the spheres. So that is right down here. Okay, so we'll go update the spheres 
And then this pretty much does what you would expect. It linearly steps through all of the spheres, does some, some logic with their velocity, just to keep them from going out of bounds, and then updates their positions and velocities if needed. The performance here is pretty good. It's compiled. It's all good. Now, then the question is, okay, our, our structures have changed. Are we going to rebuild them or refit them? Wait a second. This is sort of a sort of a fail on my part. There we go. And what we're doing is I'm going to refit for like 16 frames and then every 16 frames I'm going to do a full rebuild. This is sort of a balancing act between the heavy cost of rebuilding the whole thing and the low quality of continually refitting. This build operation works just the same as it did initially. It takes all that data, rebuilds everything from scratch. And this refit operation will look through all of the nodes from the back to the front. For each node, it will reset the bounds of the node, and then it will update based on where the children are. So for instance, if we've got an external node, we'll look through our spheres, get the min and max points for the spheres, update the node appropriately. And then if we're an internal node, we have two children and we just update the node so that we are encompassing each of those children. So what does this look like? I am curious to see if that actually changes performance. It sort of does. Okay. So as you can see, it is it going to, it's going to fail, isn't it? Oh, not great. You can see there that it sort of speeds up until it has to rebuild. So it's going along and then every so often it pauses and this is where a full rebuild is occurring and then it just fails. I feel like that limitation is due to this being in Python. So again, if I look at the BVH back and I have a ton of technical debt that I need to pay off in explaining these functions, but um, some of this stuff is compiled, some of it isn't. And the reason is the number just in time compiler, it's it has its limitations and it's it's running into those. So long story short, I know this has just been a weird rant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to re-implement this in C++ so that the cost of a full rebuild is dramatically reduced and hopefully that will scale. It, it'll handle it a little better. Thanks for stopping in. I wonder why that wasn't throwing an error before. That should definitely throw an error. But anyway, this is what it was looking like before I, I changed that line. But yeah, again, happy with everything except the actual performance. So, unfortunately, I don't have too much exciting to show, but that's where this is at. So thanks for stopping in. Keep at it, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.